All right. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, we're live here. All right. Um, okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, I think. Um, comment moderation. Set. Okay. We are good now. All right. OP. All right. Well, we um, there's some technical stuff with the sound um, in the mixture, so we're only going to do um, Facebook, all right? So those of you who are here on Facebook, that is the only place you can. Uh, so please um, direct everybody here on Facebook. So those of you on the YouTube and all that, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, we're only going to... Uh, be on Facebook today, all right, for some technical issue with the sound. And so um, let's do that, okay? Well, it's, it's good. So please um, forward this message uh, to all the friends and loved ones out there that we are only live on Facebook, all right? We are only live on Facebook, so we can still get this message out. Very, very important. Whichever way we have to do it, we're going to do it to get this message out to the world. So please join me and help me out to share it to friends and loved ones, um, everybody out there, let them be a, you know, be a blessing to them as well. Okay, be a blessing, be a blessing to everybody. Okay, well, we've been talking um, about uh, direction, God's direction for our, our daily life and um, the challenges we encounter on daily basis. And uh, what we ought to do when we are confronted with this world or life challenges. And um, the important importance that um, we need to give to uh, the instructions or the directions or the tools that is given to us by God to use to combat these challenges or um, to face these challenges when they come because we will face these challenges. I, I often will, um, like to uh, make reference to Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Paul who said in first, second um, Corinthians chapter 1, that uh, I think verse 8, and that um, trouble came to us in Asia, that he doesn't want the brethren to be ignorant about this fact that trouble comes these challenges of life comes and when they come what do we do we need to apply apply the tools of god given to us to combat them first of all we have to know that we have a god we have a god who has not forsaken us he's not with us in good times only but he's with us even in bad times all right and so he said that uh, when you face these challenges, don't trust in yourself, but in God who raised the dead. But in God who raised the dead, who has the capability of creating and um, also raising even the dead. Apostle Paul says that we did not trust in ourselves. He said that we found ourselves like the sentence of death was passed on us. And therefore, we did not have to trust in ourselves, but in God who raised the dead. All right? Who has delivered us and still deliver. Now, you ought to know that God is a God of deliverer. He is a deliverer and he will deliver you. And so when you find yourself in this life crossroad, you need to know which person and who to call. And uh, we see in uh, in James chapter one verse five that 
um, talks about the fact that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. If any of you lack wisdom, when you, you lack wisdom in the time of the life challenges, ask God. When you are confronted with life challenge, ask God. When you find yourself in this crossroad of life, you don't know which direction to go, ask God. Beloved, it's so important for you and I to get this direction from God so that we don't miss our destination. I hope you understand that if you do say amen. And so we've been looking at some scriptures, all right, which is the word of God that helps us and direct us to the right places when we find ourselves in this crossroads of life. And with that, I want us to go into the word of God now and see a couple uh, prescriptions that helps us to meet this um, challenges eyeball to eyeball and shoulder to shoulder. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you have your Bibles with you, and if you don't, for whatever reason, please make sure you take down these notes, make some good notes for yourself, take down the scriptures and apply them to your life when you are confronted with this life challenges. We are talking about life challenges that everybody goes through. Now, maybe this is not what you want to hear. Maybe this is not a kind of type of message you want to hear. But you see, when, when you come to a place where all you have to do is to rely on people, beloved, you are always going to get the, the, the tail end of the stick. Whilst you, you have the opportunity to sit at the front row, you're going to get the tail end of the stick. Why? Because you are depending on somebody instead of God. Instead of God. So, make sure you write down these scriptures, apply them into your life, because, beloved, this Bible is our manual for daily life and living. This scriptures, this Bible, which is the word of God, this is our manual for daily life and living. And so we need to understand that and then take all that we ought to use to apply into our areas of challenge. Okay? Now come with me to um, Psalms chapter 46. Psalms 46. When we find yourself in a crossroad, we're talking about God's direction for our lives. God's direction for our lives when you find yourself in a crossroad. Remember this, that God is your refuge and strength. God is your refuge and strength. The Bible says that Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. So this is where you see this is where you see um, Apostle Paul talking about when he found himself in trouble or trouble came to him, he did not trust himself, but in God who raised the dead. He did not trust in himself, but in God who raised the dead. The Bible says that God is our, our strength and our refuge, a very present help in trouble. So, when you find yourself in this life crossroad, remember God is your strength and your refuge. You don't know which direction to go. Remember this. Beloved, I'm only giving you solutions to life problems when you face them. Because you are going to face them. It's part of life. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking, you know, um, dark stuff into your life. This is life. This is a this is part of your practical Christian life. If anybody told you that because you being a Christian, you're not going to be confronted or challenged with any life issues, that person lied to you. Then I've just said that person doesn't know the scriptures and certainly has no idea of what the Christian life is all about. Jesus, our Lord and Savior Himself, come was confronted with all kinds of issues. All kinds of issues, especially with the religious leaders. 
They always had a problem with him, trying to discredit him, trying to say all kinds of things against him and all that, even though he came to do good. He says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us life. However, he was confronted with issues of people who did not like his ministry, who thought that he is making himself equal with God and all this and all that. And yet, he had to stay focused and all that. So I want you to draw your mind to the fact that you are a Christian does not mean you will not go through challenges of life. You will. Why is it that you 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 know you see believers sick? Why is it that? Wasn't the 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 um, um, the mother-in-law of Peter following Jesus? Yes, and yet she was sick of fever. People get sick. People get or face challenges of this life that confronts us one way or the other. And most of the time, it's not what you are even looking for. Because you are, you are praying for something positive. You are praying to God for your destiny, your future. And here you get yourself or find yourself confronted with an issue that you didn't ask for it. What do you do? That doesn't mean that you are not a Christian. And don't, don't, please don't jump quickly to think that well because of the fact that you got up this morning, you have not prayed, and that is why, um, you know, you find yourself in this, in this uh, predicament and that kind of stuff. Beloved, Apostle Paul, what did he do? But he said, trouble came to us. He said, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. It, it's a very, it's, it's a very strong statement for you and me. To understand that the fact that we are believers does not mean that challenges will not come. I'm talking about the practicality of your Christianity. He says, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant of the trouble that came to us in Asia. I don't want you to be ignorant. Don't be ignorant that the fact that you are Christian, you will not be confronted with some challenge in your life. But what do you do when you find yourself in this challenge. Number one, remember that God is your refuge and your strength. Your refuge, your security, and your strength. The strength that you will need to combat that situation, the strength that you will need to probably wait until that thing is out of your path. You need strength. But there's a scripture that says, uh, um, if you faint in the day of trouble, your strength is weak. If you faint in the day of trouble, your strength is weak. So remember that God is your refuge, number one, your security, number one, and your strength, number two. God is not anybody else. Please remember that. It's so important that you remember that when you find yourself in any situation of life that confronts you, that challenges your faith, remember God is your refuge and your strength. You will need strength to combat that situation. You will need strength to wait on the Lord. You will need strength to believe that this too shall pass. God is, Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in the day of trouble. So if you think that, well, you're not going to be encountering any trouble or, or some religious person have told you that Christianity has no troubles or whatever, but beloved, they, they lie to you. Okay? If you don't believe it, just all I'm going to say is just keep living. Just keep living. That's all. Just keep living. Number two. Number two. Remember that the Lord is also near the Lord is near to all who call on Him. The Lord is near to all those who call on Him. In Psalm 145 verse 18. Turn your Bibles there. Psalm 145 verse 18. The Lord is near to all those who call on Him. 
to all who call upon him in truth in truth in truth so beloved be 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 mindful of this and stay the course i am only pointing you to god that he is your refuge and strength in a very present help not later right there he's your help call upon him okay uh that is all i'm saying to you if you want to add anything else to your life beloved that's your own choice but i'm here to remind you as a servant of god that god is your present help or present helper in your day of trouble call upon him look at psalm 145 verse 18 the lord is near to all those who call on him he's near i told you the other day that god is not as as far as you think he is he's not god is not it's not far away god is not far away from 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 you all right believe that he's not far away call he says call upon me and i will answer you and that is if you only call he will answer you the way he will use to um redeem you or deliver you that is his own way his his ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts and so trust in him believe in him and he will save you he will deliver you all right the word of god says the lord is near to all who call on him the lord is near he is not far away and to those who call on him in truth who call on him in truth all right look at uh, proverbs chapter 1 verse 33 but whoever listens to me all right whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil whoever listens to him whoever listens and so there is a choice for you to listen i, I was telling you know uh, uh, my young sister yesterday i said you need to spend time to listen to god spend time it's you know you 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 pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Well, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Well, when are you going to listen, 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 listen? You need to listen. Listen to God. When you are praying to Him, or when you're talking to Him, He is quite listening. But if you are talking and He's talking, that is why I personally I don't like, you know to talk over you when you are talking i want to be quiet and listen to you because this one thing to listen is another thing to hear what you are saying and so if you are talking and i am talking talking over each other we we don't hear what whatever i mean i can hear you talking but i'm not listening to what you're saying so you need to make time to listen to god god is talking you need to make time to listen and that is maybe you want to just take a time out, take a day out, couple days out, whatever is convenient for you that, you know, fits in your schedule. Make time and listen to God. Probably sometimes, sometimes you want to, you want to um, just maybe leave the house, go sit somewhere in a quiet place, on a park, on, on um, some secluded area where you can listen without no, you know, nobody calling you, you know, disturbing your peace with the telephones and everything. And listen to God. Listen to Him. All right? He says, but whoever listens to me will dwell safely. Whoever listens to me will dwell safely. So if you want to dwell safely, make time to listen to God. Get away from a lot of things. Stay away from a lot of things. Sometimes it, it's, beloved, it's so important that you do that. Because you see, your life is directed and geared by God. We're talking about directions, God's directions for your life. You need to know wh where to go, how to turn this situation. All right? And, you, and, and, and with that, you have to make time to listen to God for the direction in which you should go. 
if you don't do that, beloved, you're going to find yourself in, a, in an anxious state. And the Bible tells you that be anxious for nothing. <laughs> so if you don't do that, then you, you are going contrary to what the scripture says. Be anxious for nothing. But if you if you you will be anxious if you don't make time to listen to God. And he says, Whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure. You'll be secured without fear of evil. You'll be secured without fear of evil. You'll be secured. You will not find yourself in a state of fear. You will not find yourself in a state of fear. So um, it is so, 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 so important that please we get this um, um, understanding in our heart. All right. We are living in a times, beloved, has always been and will always be until Jesus shows up that uh, we will be confronted with life challenges. We will be because first of all, you, you have imperfect people, human beings, all across the face of the earth. You have imperfect people. And so somebody is going to even step on your foot intentionally or unintentionally. Sometimes you're going to, you're going to what, what you have, uh, you thought was going to be perfect will come, you will wake up one morning and you realize that this perfect situation is not perfect after all. What do you do? What do you do? You don't run away from God and try to seek, you know, helps from other places. Remember, God is your refuge and your strength. Beloved, if you don't, if you don't have this understanding, you'll be running helter scatter all over the place. I'm serious. So, well, all I'm going to say is that just keep living. Maybe again, this is not the kind of message. You tune in here to listen. Maybe you're looking for a prophecy. Beloved, uh, if you don't, <laughs> if you do not get this in your heart, you'll be all over the place. You see, when you find yourself in the state of being anxious, to want to get the results, you want to get answers quick, you will do some foolish things. And later on, you'll regret I've been there before, and that's why I know. You you'll be doing some foolish things, and then later on you you're gonna regret. You'll be all over the place trying to see this one for help, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to do that. And if God has not, and even want to get your attention or bring you to the place of maturity, like some of us, beloved, it doesn't matter where you go, you're not gonna get the answers. And you're going to see how foolish you did looking back when you are finally decided to just relax and allow God to do his thing. Remember, he created you for good, not for evil. God created you for good and not for evil. So remember that. All right. Don't ever think that your life is meaningless. Don't ever think your life is has a meaning. Beloved, remember. Your, 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 your parents, your biological parents did not create you. God created you. Okay? You know, I remember um, uh, this um, uh, story about a young guy by the name of Jabez, all right, who spoke to God, out, spoke his heart out to God, and God, remember me and change, you know, my situation the name that my mother gave me is, is, is a name that troubles me. People call me sorrow. The meaning of Jabez means sorrow. And people call me sorrow. And, and uh, the, you know, I mean, I don't like that God changed. Now, remember, his biological mother gave him that name. But he acknowledged the fact that it was God who created him. So he went to God. He didn't ask the mother to change his name. He went to God. Beloved, you need to know the difference between who created you and who gave birth to you. <laughs> okay? 
And so go to God. Remember, God is your refuge and your strength. He is. This is why, see, this is why Jesus came to reconcile you and me back to God. God created you and I to have fellowship with Him, to have a relationship with Him. As a result of the sin of Adam, sin came in the, in the bloodline of all human race. But I believe you've heard this before. For God so loved the world, therefore, He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus. And now the issue is you. Whosoever receive, believe, and trust in Him, you will not have everlasting, you will, you will, you will, you will, you will have everlasting life. You will not perish. You won't perish in anything, but you have everlasting life. In other words, you are, you are connected back to God, the originator, the maker of you. And um, the mindset that he had to create you, which is good and not evil, you come back in alignment with him and therefore things begin to fall in place with you. I hope you understand this. That is, that is the whole essence of Jesus coming to reconcile you and me back to God. So now God sees you and me through Jesus and see us as righteous people, not as sinners. So outside Jesus, we are seen as sinners. I hope you understand that. That is the whole ess essence of Jesus coming on the scene to reconcile us. So the ministry of Jesus is a ministry of reconciliation. It's not a ministry of condemnation. That if you don't receive me, if you don't receive me, you're going to go to hell and that kind of stuff. No. It's a ministry of reconciliation. And so please be mindful of that. We are talking about God's direction for life. When you find yourself on a crossroad, you don't know where to turn. Maybe you don't even have anybody. And there are times where you think you have some people that you can call. Well, they'll be there. Well, today they'll be there. Tomorrow they, they might not be there. What are you going to do? God is eternal. He's everlasting. He's always there. Always will be there. People that you can count on or you can call may not be there every day. The reason is they can get sick. They will die. Or they may not even, even pick your call. What are you going to do? And so remember, remember that when you need a direction of life, that direction, you come to the place, well, I, I, I need that direction. I don't know how to go about this situation. Beloved, remember this. James 1.5 says, If anyone lacks wisdom, anyone lacks any, let him ask of God. Ask of God. If you lack you you are lacking wisdom in this situation, you don't know where to turn, whether to go to the right or to go to the left. Look to call call on God. That's what the scripture is saying. Call on God. Don't just think that people are going to be there for you all the time. Because there comes a time where they are not there. What are you going to do? Do you stop living? You don't stop living. You go to the one who has not gone anywhere. All right? It's so important. Look at um, Psalms 32 verse 8. It says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Listen to that. I will guide you with my eyes. I will, I will teach you the way you should go. I will instruct you. And teach you the way you should go. Beloved, that is if you only, if you will only listen to him. In, in uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33. He says, but whoever listens, you will dwell safely. If you listen. If you listen. But if you allow the situation to, you know, to consume you. It will cloud your mind. It will cloud your heart. It will cloud your ears that you will not even hear when God is, is speaking. 
and an another another place that I want to I want to bring out to you um, that I have I have seen that also is that well you pray this religious prayer Lord help me and then you are still worrying about that situation mm -hmm. maybe somebody know out there listening to me you know what I'm talking about you have prayed about this situation but still you are you are still consumed after you finish praying you are still worrying about it beloved uh, you 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 did a religious prayer you didn't you didn't talk to god trusting in him listen to what the scripture says he says look at um look at psalm 145 verse 18 again the lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth the lord is near to all who call on him so calling on him, all right, you need to call on him in truth, not in the religious way. Calling on the Lord is like, oh, well, I'm praying, Father, help me out of this situation. Oh, Lord, help me. Okay, then you finish prayer, and then you are there, you are still worrying and concerned yourself all about it. Now, did you trust him when you spoke to him? Did you trust him when you call on him? Trust him. Trust him. Apostle Paul said again, he says, we, 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 did, we don't trust in ourselves, but in God who raised the dead. But in God, come with me, let me, let, let's talk, let's look at that scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 1. I want us to see that, that so, so, so important. Second Corinthians chapter 1. All right, look, look at, um, look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. He says, We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. We had a sentence of death. You find yourself in a place where it's like your back is not only against the wall, but your back is going through the wall. Have you been there before? It's like your back is literally going through the wall. Your back is not only against the wall. Your back is going through the wall. And so, beloved, you need to understand this. And to know that God is your refuge. If you only can make God your refuge and understand that He's your strength, He's your strength, you will find yourself in the right direction that you should go. Apostle Paul said, it says for verse 8, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, we don't want you to be ignorant don't think that you know we don't go through anything we go through challenges yet we are we are Christians yet we are believers we are children of God but we go through challenges yes I, I, man I'm telling you 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 have no idea sometimes you you look to some of us and you think we don't have no challenges we are human beings like you yes we are we are equally human beings we sneeze and we cough and we do all other things that you do but our understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus makes all the difference I hope you understand that beloved this world is full of a whole bunch of stuff unnecessary competition makes people even act foolish unnecessary competition you want to compete with this one because you saw this one doing this and you too you want to be do that and all that not finding your own self as to what God has created you to be and 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 what exactly did God create you to become on the face of this earth to his glory and then you want to copy this one and you want to follow this one you want to you want to emulate this one and and, and you lose your own self you lose yourself you don't have your own personality but yet God created you with a unique personality and that there's no one see that is why uh, I believe um, as, um, 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 I don't know what a scientist or whoever can tell you that you are the only one who has this individual fingerprinting this biometric thing here okay you are the only one nobody has your fingerprint on the face of this earth maybe you don't know this i'm telling you that nobody else has your fingerprint you are the only person 
you I mean God <laughs> like God has God has created you and given you your own unique barcode mm -mm -mm. oh boy you are you are the only one with this unique barcode and this barcode is nobody else has it think about that and you think you are useless person and you think you don't matter and you think there's 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 no value to you are you kidding me beloved just know that you are created by God as long as you do that as long as you know that trust me when you find yourself because you see this life challenges I'm talking about it, it doesn't matter it, it cuts across board you find anybody that you think maybe you don't have problems uh, you know um, King David said this that problems only come to those who are alive and so if you are alive and living and call yourself a human being mm -hmm, one way or the other troubles come to you I I, I, <laughs> I asked a question some time ago can God trust you know trust you with troubles or you think everything should be nice and dandy across your up and all your life beloved there are troubles in this world there are challenges in this world Jesus said that he says in this in this world you will have tribulations Jesus said that he says in this world yes you will have tribulation you're not gonna have it all nice and dandy all the time you will have tribulation Jesus says all right, let me let me look that uh, and and show you that. He said you will have trouble. You will have trouble. He says, look at uh, John chapter fourteen and uh, verse one. Jesus says, "Let not your heart be troubled." Why? Because you are, there's trouble. <laughs> he said, "Let not your heart be be troubled." Let not your heart be troubled. Why would Jesus? Say that because there's trouble. Yeah, there is trouble. He says, in this life, you will have troubles. In this life. So, you, you need to know that. You will have tribulation, he says. You will have tribulations. Alright? And so, when you are confronted with this life troubles or life challenges, please remember, number one, that God created you for good not for evil god created you for good and not for evil and therefore therefore you are to seek him you are to call on him you are to ask him for the direction in which you want to go you come to that crossroad of life you don't know which direction to go ask god james james chapter chapter 1 verse 5 he says, if you, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberal without reproach, and it will be given to him. If any of you, you need wisdom for that this, this situation, whether it's a marital situation, whether it's a financial situation, your educational situation, your family situation, whatever situation it may be, ask God who gives to all without reproach without any strange attack all right he's going to say he's not going to give it to you and say oh listen i'm doing you a favor remember me when you you get to your your final destination mm -mm. he's he, he, he's god i hope you understand that if you do say amen all right and so um we need to we need to get this now let's look at a couple more scriptures here all right, let's look at a couple more scriptures. Again, Psalm 145, verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. And so, when you are calling on the Lord or asking Him for direction, be sincere. Be sincere. He's near. God knows your heart already. So, He, he knows if you are just, you know, trying to... Um, you know, BS in him and all that. Ah, you got to try to BS, BS in God. Be sincere with him. Be sincere with him. Beloved, if you don't understand this, you are going to fall into the 
arms of religious people and they are going to just make a yo-yo out of you. All right, they're going to make a yo-yo out of you and you're going to see those people as your God. And anybody or anything that stands in place of God as first person in your life, you idolize that that, that thing or that individual and uh, you become an enemy of God because God does not like anything before him. That's him. You idolize that thing. And God says, don't be, don't idolize anything or anybody. It's so, in, it's so, it's so easy that a lot of people idolize the pastors. You know, it's like, they, it's like, I mean, uh, like you, you make anything, you make that individual a God. Are you kidding me? How do somebody create you, create that individual or whatever, and you make that thing God? That's why God was 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 angry with the children of Israel. They made a God for themselves and turned their back against the one who delivered them from slavery. And so be mindful of that. So when you get yourself or find yourself in the state of um, um, of um, 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 uh, of a crossroad in life, beloved, remember God is. It says, but whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear. Without fear. You will be secure without fear. God does not want you to live in fear. He doesn't want you and me to live in fear. The Bible says that God has not given you a spirit of fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear. So if God has not given you the spirit of fear, why do you entertain fear? Because you do not know that God has not given you the spirit of fear. So you welcome fear. And you are so fearful in just about everything. Oh, you can't sneeze right now anymore because, you know, it's like, you know, it means that maybe you have caught COVID-19. You can't sneeze anymore. Are you? I mean, you have to come to that place of knowing, beloved, who you are. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Come with me to um, uh, Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Um, verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 12. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and a dark day so oh man i love that so will i so will i so will i seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places deliver them god is our deliverer he is our deliverer listen to what apostle paul said man i love that look at this and come back to um first um um peter sorry first corinthians chapter First Corinthians chapter chapter um, chapter two, Second Corinthians chapter one. But ah yeah yeah yeah, I'm going ahead of myself. You know, I'm that full of scriptures up here. All right, Second Corinthians chapter one. Look at verse ten. He says, "Who delivered us from such great a death? Who delivered us? Who delivered us from so great a death? And does deliver us? He does deliver." God deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. He is the deliverer. And then look come look at uh, Ezekiel 34 again. Man, I love this. He says, so I will seek out my own. I will seek out my own. I will seek out my own, my sheep and deliver them from all the places, from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and a dark day. When you find yourself in a cloudy, life has clouded you. Or you see that your path is dark. You don't see no light. Beloved, remember that God is your light. That He is 
your life. He says, you, he says I, I deliver them. I deliver them. God is giving that testimony of who he is. He has not stopped delivering. God has not stopped delivering people his own. So depend on him. Call on him. He says, call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Call on me, he says. When you find yourself, we, listen, we are talking about God's direction for life. Seek the direction of God for your life when you come to that crossroad of life. Life has a way of, of confronting you with all manner of challenges. And I know I'm talking to a practical human beings out there. I know I'm talking to a practical human beings out there. So please remember, God, God is your refuge and your strength. He is your refuge and your strength. And remember that he so loved you that he sent his only begot begotten son Jesus to come and uh, rescue you and me out of eternal damnation into his marvelous presence of life. He says, man, I love this one. As a shepherd, as a shepherd, as a shepherd, as a shepherd. John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus said that. John chapter 10, he said, I am the good shepherd. So, so you see, Jesus is the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Ah, uh, I am the good shepherd. And he says, as a shepherd seek out his flock on the day, he is among his scattered sheep. He is among his scattered sheep. You are scattered. You don't even know where to turn, which direction to go. Beloved, I, I hope this, this, this is blessing you as it's blessing me. This is, this is how I live my life. I depend and put my trust in Him. Put my confidence in Him. I put my confidence in the Lord. Trust me, I don't put my confidence in people. No, I don't. I don't put my confidence in anything. I put my confidence in the Lord. And He has consistently, and that is what you need in your life, you need somebody who is consistent in your life. God is able to do it. Bible says that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above, far above what you can even think or imagine. He's able to do it. As a, as a, um, a shepherd seeks, Ezekiel chapter 34, 12. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, on the day he is among his scattered sheep. And so, so he says, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them. I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and a dark day. A cloudy and a dark day. Have you, have you received, you know, uh, uh, it's like you, you have some cloud hanging over, over you. Have you been there? It's like, when is this cloud going to get over me this dark cloud is that whatever i'm doing doesn't seem to be working beloved remember jesus is the good shepherd as the shepherd seeks out his flock why don't you rely on jesus why don't you surrender to jesus he will do you good he will do you good all have gone astray. All, all have gone astray. Listen, we were not just born as Christians. Nobody is born as Christian. And the fact that maybe you were you you grew up from a Christian home doesn't make you a Christian. You need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's an individual thing. It's a personal thing. You need to do that. Your mama or your papa being Christian don't make you a Christian. Mm -mm. It doesn't make you a Christian. You have to receive him. You have to receive him. Come with me to um, Romans chapter 10. All right. And I'm going to let you go. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Let's read from verse um, 
8, 9, and 10. Romans chapter 10. But what does it say? The word is, is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is a word of faith which we preach. Watch this now. Watch this. And that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you confess, not if your parents confess for you, not if anybody confess for you, but if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart, you see, it's an individual thing. You have to confess him with your mouth and you have to believe him in your heart. You cannot believe Jesus in anybody's heart. And nobody can believe Jesus in, in their heart for you. You have to believe Jesus. That is why children who are babies, when you are you dedicate them, you, you don't think they are Christians. They have not grown up to understand. So it's, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your own heart, that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. You see that? You, 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 you. It's you. You will be saved. So you must make up your mind to confess um, the Lord Jesus, believe him in your heart, that God raised him from the dead. For what purpose? For your sake. Jesus went on the cross for your sake and my sake. So we have to embrace him. Look at verse 10. It says, For with the heart one believes. With the heart. With the heart one believes. To righteousness. You believe that your righteousness is through Christ Jesus. And with the mouth, confession is made to what? Your salvation. You see that it's an individual thing. Your salvation is an individual thing. And so you have to understand this, beloved, and know that nobody can be your savior but the savior himself. Nobody can be your savior. So you have to go to God. You may have 10, you know, different directions of life and you still don't know which, where to go, beloved. What you are looking for is Jesus. And when you find him, he's going to now direct your, your life and direct your path. Because he is the good shepherd. He is the shepherd. Look at Ezekiel chapter. I'm, I'm going to leave you with this one. Ezekiel 32. Sorry, 34 verse, verse 12. He says, as a shepherd. As a shepherd seeks out his own flock. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. So you must, you must receive him as your Lord and your Savior. And if you are that person, I want to pray with you at this time. If you are that person, I want to pray with you. Jesus, he says, I am the good shepherd. Do you want a shepherd who is going to direct your path, direct you, take you to the, to, to, the, to the green pastures where you can feed and feed well? Or you want to follow somebody who himself or herself needs a shepherd? Hmm? I'm not saying that don't acknowledge your pastors. I am a pastor. But I don't want you to see me as your God or your source. I lead you to him. As I follow him, like Paul says, as I follow him, you follow me. I don't have anybody else ahead of me but Christ. He is my head. And so when you receive him, I don't know what you're going through. Beloved, I don't, I'm not sitting here and, and act like I know what you are going through or, or, or what you are, you are experiencing in life right now. I don't. I am not a mind reader. I cannot read your mind. Like I said yesterday, um, I mean, all challenges, name, just put as long as they have a name somebody on the face of this earth is going through right now. So just saying that somebody have a stomach ache and or headache or, or you are not seeing well or something, beloved, it, 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 that's not prophecy. You know, maybe that's what you're looking for. It's not prophecy. Somebody somehow, some way on in this life is experiencing nothing right now. So when you see it, 
when, when you say something like this and God is healing that person right now, listen, you haven't said nothing. That, that is a religious lie. It's a religious lie. So if you're expecting that from me, you ain't going to get that. Thinking, oh, so I, you know, there's somebody right now, you are going through a marital problems. And that marital problem is, is giving you a lot of headache like you have a migraine. Beloved, people go through marital problems unexpectedly. They don't expect that. If they thought that the marriage was going to last forever, something, somehow, some way, they came to the crossroad of life. And this thing, it looks like the marriage is on the rocks. And they, it's disturbing them and they have headache. You know, every, people go through that. That's not prophecy. It's not prophecy. And out of, um, I don't know how many billions of people on the face of this earth, you cannot tell me that one person will not be going through all that. So when when you, you see people sitting on a social media saying some of this and some of you, all you do, you because you are in a haste, you want to get some quick answers and therefore you are following this thing. Beloved, you, 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 as long as you put yourself there, you are going to be on that religious treadmill or a yo-yo because you will be going back all the time. Give your life to Jesus. Let him be your Lord and your Savior. And trust me, you're not going to go wrong, but you will get to your destination. I want to pray for somebody who wants to give your life to Jesus. Jesus has commissioned us to go into all the nations of the world and make disciples. Discipleship of the salvation message, the salvation ministry that he came to introduce us to. He came to reconcile us back to God. Give your life to him and you will not go wrong. If you are that person, I want to pray with you. It says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe him in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Are you that person? If you are that person, I want to pray with you. Say, Lord Jesus, sincerely, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message. I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and into my life. This very moment, I surrender my whole life into your hands. I confess you with my mouth and I believe you in my heart that God raised you from the dead. You took upon yourself my sins and you nailed it to the cross. Now, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. I confess you with my mouth and I believe you in my heart. I am born again and I thank you for giving me this opportunity to receive the finished work of you on the cross. Now, Jesus, baptize me with your spirit that I may hear your voice. I may see the directions in which to go to be in alignment with the plan and the purpose and the will of God for my life on this earth. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, in your name, I ask of this. Amen and amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer sincerely, if you pray that prayer sincerely, you have been born again. It's a spiritual rebirth. It's not something that, you know, you said, well, I don't feel anything. Beloved, it's not about feeling. It's about you seeing the demonstration of power of God in your life. You know, it's so important that um, I stress that if you did it sincerely. You see, if you look at Psalm 145 again, verse 18, it said, The Lord is near to all those who call on Him and to those who call on Him in truth. In truth. So it's so important. That's why I stress that. All right? So today you are born again if you have given your life to Jesus. You have made him your Lord and your Savior. Now, the next thing I want to encourage you to do is to get your Bible. This is the manual for daily life and living, as we, we just read from that. 
we I teach from this. This is the manual in which I live my life. And if you will do the same, you will see God in action in your life because this is the word of God. I hope you understand. And the, and His Spirit, His Spirit that you've asked to be in you, His Spirit will come and and help you to rightly divide the word of truth because His Spirit. Is a spirit of truth. I hope you understand that. So make sure you get your copy wherever you can find that. If you can't find one or can't afford one, please let us know. All right, just say that, you know, Pastor, I cannot afford, you know, this Bible or I can't find one. As long as you have an address and all that, we'll make sure you get one. And I want you to join me also, all right, in um, sending your financial contribution to purchase Bibles. Or maybe you have a you can do that. Please send it, send that to us. All right, because we have to send that to different countries all over the world. We are talking about over a million plus Bibles, the word of God, into the hands of everybody. So please do that. Now, again, today we had a little glitch with the sound of the mixture or this technology thing here. So um, unfortunately we could not, you know, continue with all other platforms but have to stay here on the YouTube uh, is going to be looked at and I believe tomorrow God willing we will be back across board so please share if you want to on the uh, Facebook with me please share this on your YouTube platforms other platforms your groups and um, be a blessing to somebody with this message somebody need to hear this okay so be a, a blessing to somebody um, put it on your timelines you can do your watch parties and all that good stuff with it God bless all of you I thank you for your time and um, all I ask is join me to broadcast this by sharing this all over the platforms and all other social medias as well okay well if you want to reach us uh, I guess the crawler is not there so uh, let me just um, give you a um, line of, um, of um, contact. Okay, you can use this telephone number, which is nine, area code 914. If you are calling outside the United States, it's plus one and then 914 All right, do that. If it's email, it's icfm 29 at gmail.com icfm29 at gmail.com okay or you want to also go to the uh, website of this ministry where you can you know put your comments and all that there as well it's www.patrickquinoministries.com w3w www.patrickquinoministries.com P A T R I C K Q U A I N O O dot ministries. Oh, sorry, ministries, Patrick Quenu ministries dot com. Okay, let me say that again www dot Patrick Quenu ministries dot com on the website and let's hear from you. But go to the YouTube, go to YouTube, put the name there also. Patrick Quino Ministries, click on subscribe. You see the button that says click on subscribe, and you can download all these messages to uh, for your increase and growth. All right, if you want to be a financial um, supporter to this ministry, please go to the website of this ministry also and click on the word that says donate. And you can follow the rest of the instructions. Or if you want to use a Zelle or Cash App, the number for that is 914-572-9816. If you are called, if you want to do that from outside United States, remember it's plus one and 914-572-9816. Uh, okay? God bless you so, so, so much. Please, it's so important for me for you to broadcast this uh, message and uh, be a blessing to the world until i see you same time tomorrow as always you don't have no trouble 
all you need is your faith in God and in all thy getting, get understanding. I'll see you all tomorrow. God bless you.